So we're on page 138. So what did we see last time? We, said, we saw the difference between Machshava and Dibur. Everything that Hashem did, He did by Dibur. Everything He did, He did by speaking. What is the difference between Hashem's Machshava and Hashem's Dibur? Because His Machshava is like, a, a, when Hashem thinks of something, that is an act, right? And when He speaks something, it's also an act. So for Hashem, there is no difference between Machshava, Dibur, or Maise. It's all the same. First of all, by Hashem, there's no difference between anything and anything. Right. It's all, it's all the way that we perceive it. Right. So what he said last time is that Dibur is Idgalia, is something revealed. Okay. Same thing as by us, that I can't think, I, I don't know what you think, but I can, I can hear what you say. Dibur. 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 Yeah. And in, in Machshava, it's a, it's Kasia. It's, it's a concealed. Okay, but what about Maisa? Maisa is also Mashubu. Okay. Maisa already has the quality of creating something that has the potential to feel separate. And in Dibur, there's no such thing. So what's the difference between Hashem's Dibur and Hashem's Maisa? Because it says they created the world by Dibur. That in our world, there's a big, there's a big separation between the two. That when you, when you speak, yeah. So, on the one hand, you're revealing something from yourself. That's us, but for Hashem. So, so we, again, we're learning backwards. We, okay. we don't. Ha I don't think we have another option. Okay. So we're saying that that when Hashem speaks, the connection is still there's still a hundred percent connection between what He's saying, and, and and it's not like a person that the words dissipate into 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 air, yeah, but they but they continue to resound. Right. Yeah. Or the Chea Aritz, like you said, all the Ma'amarot are still present, they're still happening at this moment. By a person, the, when you finish the, speaking, it's gone. Right. And you're also not dedicated to it, you're not committed to it. Meaning, I could have said something yesterday, and today I said something, something else. I promised, but I didn't promise right. to keep my promise. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say something else. But by Hashem, He's always connected. But when it comes to the Maise, the Maise is different. The Maisa really is a separate reality. It allows for a separate reality. And the moment that Hashem creates something in, in some sort of action, so there you already have some kind of potential for it being completely separate. So he says that Kulam Asita. Hashem does it from his perspective. He wants everything to be connected to him still because he puts Chochma into everything. But from our perspective, the Chochma doesn't always hold. So we don't feel the bitul to Hashem. So we can feel separate. So the, always the, the explanation of this is all in the letter Hey. That the Machshava is the top uh, line and the Dibur is the right line. But the, but the left line, which is disconnected, that's the Maise. So it says in this world, the Maise is separate from the Machshava. That you can see that there is a gap in between. What is that gap? That gap is the Yitzhar, the Petach Chatat So it's explained that that's the Petach. It's one of the explanations, many explanations on the hay, but that's one of them that, uh, that the Rebbe has brought. In any case, it, it's, degrees of, uh, it's degrees of how much it can stand by itself. So, so by machshava, there's no need, Hashem doesn't need to, re, to renew the machshava all the time. There's no renewal in it. The machshava is constant. In the Dibur, there is a need to sustain it. Meaning, that's what we say that the, the Asara Ma'amarot, the ten utterances that create reality, Hashem has to sustain them all the time. So he has to add new energy into it all the time. But He's committed to it, so He continues to add new energy to it. But with Maise, so there there's, there's no seemingly, there's no, seemingly there's no connection anymore. It's like as if He made it. So it's in, the, in the Shara Yichud Ve'emunah, He says that's a mistake of the philosophers. That they liken the fact to making something it can, that it can stand separately from the Maker to how Hashem created the world. That's why they don't understand that even though, it, again, the, the, the simple experience of a human being is that I'm separate from Hashem. That's the, that's the regular experience. But come to Tzadikim and say, no, my, my innate experience is that I'm not separate from Hashem. That I'm entirely one with Hashem. I, which part of Hashem? I'm uh, not part of, not just, uh, not one with the Soviv. Soviv is by everything. It's always the same. Soviv is, there's no difference between Machshava, Dibu, and Maisa. So you can be the person who is not keeping Torah and Mitzvahs, 
who feels that he's separated from Hashem, but Hashem is not separated from him. Okay, that's that's that was the Tanya the last two weeks. Hashem, obviously, he's not he hasn't separated himself from creation, but it's true that that because there's action there, action allows for there to be a feeling of separation. So, Vizel. וזהו שבכל מעשה ששת ימי בראשית הדחר ויחולו לא נאמר רק שם אלוקים כי אם אחר שנאמר ויחולו So we find an interesting phenomena that the Sefer Yetzir is, is based on it that in the description of creation the only name of Hashem that appears is Elohim and, it, and it, it's 32 times and so on and the only time that we finally find or the first time that we find Havaya, the Tetragrammaton connected to Elohim is after Vayichulu, is on Shabbos. And it says, Vayichulu ha-shamayim v'arats v'chol tzvam, v'ayachal Elohim v'yom shim v'lachto asher asa, v'yishbot v'yom shim v'kom v'lachto asher asa, v'averech v'yikim v'yom shim v'kadosh asher, v'yom shim v'kom v'lachto asher v'ay Elohim So the three last Elohims described on Shabbos, and then, right after that, every time that Hashem, Hashem's name appears, it appears in conjunction with Havaya and Elohim, the two together. Why? אחר כך נאמר, כן, after Shabbos, נאמר ביום הסות Havaya Elohim. נזכר אחר כך דווקא שם Havaya. So what's the difference between Havaya and Elohim? Why could you not include God's name, the essential name, the Tetragrammaton, in the description of creation? So uh, somebody would answer, a simple answer would be, because Elohim equals a Teva, it mm-hmm. equals nature. Mm-hmm. So it's a type of concentration or concealment. So here he explains it. It's known that the relationship between Havaya and Elohim, between these two names, is like the sun and its sheath. By Havaya, which is God's essential name, there it says that there's no change. It's always permanent, it's always constant. And what this also means is what we say in the in the Patach Riyal, that when we say that Hashem has the power of justice, we don't mean our justice. Why? Because our justice changes. That our understanding of justice changes. But His understanding of justice is constant, it's permanent. And because this is too much for the world, because it would not allow there to be any change, it would not allow there to be any kind of, call it, um, um, process, or, or, again, some kind of change. So that constant aspect of Hashem, which is always the same, never changing, has to be put into a sheath. And that's the nertik. That's the thing that, that, like for the sun, is... Uh, 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 like a, a, a protective, a protective layer, so that the sun doesn't burn uh, reality, as it were. Okay, we talked about this once. That in today's physics, we don't see it as, as the sheath being around the sun. We see it as the sheath being around the earth. And that's the that's what we call the uh, the electromagnetic, uh, 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 you know, the magnetic, not electromagnetic. It's just magnetic. Uh, the magnetic field around the Earth, which is nobody knows exactly what what causes it, but it's theorized that within the Earth there's a there's an iron core which is rotating, and because it's rotating, it's creating a a, a magnetic uh, field around the Earth, and this magnetic field shields us from the sun. In any case, so there's a lot of, a lot to be said about that. We've talked about that once, and that's important here. Why? The sheath is needed in order to allow creation to feel that it's something from nothing. And by nothing we mean Hashem. Meaning that we don't see a direct connection to God. That allows our free will, that allows our change, that allows our, us to go through processes. And Another way of saying this, about the Magen, the Nautik, is that those are the letters of speech as opposed to the letters of thought. Meaning that the revealed world, which was created by Hashem's ten utterances, 
has built into it a sheath from seeing the permanent reality behind it. And some of that, some of that we, 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 we've uncovered, some of that we know what the permanent reality behind things is. It's very interesting that, that, that um, the first, uh, the first, um, call it anacha, like the first attempt or the, or, or the natural way that scientists see reality is that when we uncover the laws of physics, the laws that govern reality, that call it the letters inside, our, our reality. again, the way that we perceive reality, strangely, they don't say the laws should be able to change. Scientists have a very strong thing about laws being permanent, the laws of nature being what they call universal, true everywhere and at all times. And that's, that's very interesting. Why, why would they say that? I mean, I know the, the, the philosophical argument is called Occam's razor. They say, Occam, he had this thing that if all things being equal, different arguments being equal, choose the simplest one. So theoretically, it's more simple to say that everything is just the same all the time. But I don't know if that's really, is it really more simple? There's a lot of stuff that you would explain much better if you would allow for change in the laws of nature. Many you things... Stop saying that the speed of light is, you know, For instance, fixed. for instance. It's not. Okay. Uh, is it, is it not? Uh, but why, why the, such a clear uh, fundamental hanacha, uh, uh, like this, uh, again, this... Uh, because scientists want ah. to be able to uh, oh, so. say, we know what's going okay. on. We know, so we, not so only do we know what's going on now, we, we know, know what happened be before. Future. We know what happened right. in the future. Otherwise, what kind of science is it? But it's not true. It's, it's very, it's just not, why, why is it? So you have to say that at some level, they're feeling exactly this thing. That behind nature is a permanent reality. Is a non-changing reality. So they confuse it with the laws of physics. But it's not the laws of physics. <laughs> it's Shema Vaya. Shema Vaya is not, is not the laws of physics. It's something much more. The, the Elohim is the, is the laws of physics. It's, it's, it's the sheath. <laughs> okay. but, but you see that at the core, there's this understanding that somehow behind all of this, it must be something that has permanence, something that's unchanging, and so on. And that's exactly what this is saying. It's just saying that really it's not the laws of nature. It's something far beyond nature. Because nature reflects the changing part of Hashem or the Shem Elohim, which does have change in it, which is actually meant to allow for change. So you could say it's, it's meant to allow for change, the same way that the laws of nature allow for change. You put different uh, initial input into the law, you get different output. Okay, that, so that's one possibility of change. But, but there's a higher level of change, which is that the laws themselves change also, because we're not talking about Torah yet. Torah has an unchanging core, but because that's Otiyot HaMachshava already, that's already something else. Okay, so so, the, it, but it's still it's it's very uh, like this this we call it today the you know the the sociology of science or something like that. Why 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 is it so clear to the scientists that, that that the core equations, the core laws, have to be unchanging? I don't think science can work if it doesn't have that. Of course it can work. Of course it can work. It's too complicated. Why? In the same so way that you have temperature. There. No, you have temperature changing changing how things work. You have time changing how things work. It, it, it just, it's just how you plot it. When, when you put it on a graph, there's many laws that change with temperature. So why not have with... You know what? Almost all laws also no, have no, a T no, in them. Laws don't change with temperature. Yeah, they do. Things change with temperature. No, no, no. no. It said them. But <laughs> the, 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 the equation moves, you're using the changes. Mercury moves with the temperature. Obviously. So that's not the law that's changing it. It is in itself a yeah, law. You can, but you put temperature into the into the equation. Well, you have a problem putting a t, another little t into the equation, saying it would t change it with time. I just have to find the constant, or however this constant changes. A lot of these constants are very complex. He's talking about uh, viscosity of uh, mercury. It's not a simple constant. It's a constant that depends on temperature and on pressure. So you've got this. In the end, we put k there. It's a nice, nice K. But that K, when you open it up, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very complex function. Mm -hmm. 
we don't have a problem adding variability into, into equations. We know how to do that. Ah, you want to have less variables. I understand why you want to have less variables. Why would you want a variable when you can put a constant in? It's much, much we'll better find. to have it. We'll <laughs> but really, if you're a mathematician, so you would like more variables. Why, why not have variables? <laughs> What's wrong with a variable? Another one. I, 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 imagine that we, we're today in, in, a, in a time where we see temperature as a variable. I don't think that in early times they had that, that, uh, that uh, sensitivity because the temperature range they saw was very small. You know, what would they see? Minus 10 to uh, 40, let's say, so they knew it moved. 50 they knew degrees. Change. So they didn't have a, a temperature variable in any of their laws. I don't think Aristotle anywhere has, has any mention of temperature affecting something. It's accidental for him. For us, it's very essential because we have temperatures from minus 273 Celsius all the way up to, you know, tens of thousands of degrees Celsius because we play with the sun. <laughs> that didn't exist for them. So, so what does it mean? Suddenly temperature became a variable. It's an important variable. So why isn't time an important variable? Why is it so clear to them that everything stays the same over time? Oh, that's because we can't manipulate time, but we can manipulate maybe, temperature. Maybe, it could be, could be. Because we don't know how to go backwards. Could be. In yeah. any case, we I, I think... We don't have to go forwards either. Sit one day at a time. No, we can check forwards. <laughs> we know how to check forwards. But in any case, I, I think that the reason for that, the underlying reason is that there is a need in the, in the, in the human psyche to understand that there is a vaya underneath it all. That there's something permanent underneath. Except that they put it close, very close to the surface. And we put it in a different dimension altogether. And we say, this is a vaya, this is a lokim. Okay. So, but, but the main thing is that letters of speech, they allow there to be a feeling of yesh me'ayin. They allow there to be a feeling that there is something from nothing. And that nothingness, again, we don't mean that it's nothing at all. What we mean to say is that we cannot perceive what the source is. Ah, the moment that you can't perceive what the source is, that allows you free will. Because now you're free to act as you want. You're not, you're not limited or you're not committed to some source that, that is unchanging. You don't, you don't know what it is. So, like we said, there's many of these, that the name Elohim is talking about, it's the source of letters and vessels. And these things go through changes all the time. And most of all, what's most important, that they can, they can act freely. But Havaya represents the light which is unchanging and permanent and static and so on, which is above the letters and the vessels. And to protect us from that permanency, which would cause the world, as it were, to lose its ability to have self-consciousness, there has to be a sheath over the name Havaya over the light. And that's what it means, really, when we talk about, you know, people talk about, in, in the, people talk about symptom, and they wonder, what, what is the reason for symptom? The real reason for symptom, and it brings it in the time, it's the first reason he brings it in the time, there's a few different reasons. But the first reason it's always brought is because otherwise, the light of Hashem would be too much. So what do we mean by that? So they give a mashal. They say the mashal is, the parable for this is that you walk into, a, from a dark room into, into sunlight, so you're blinded, you can't, uh, you can't see. So, the, so what is that muscle, what, what's that parable trying to tell us? It's trying to tell us that if we, we were aware of how everything is coming out of Shem Avaya, we wouldn't be able to act. We would act, but we would act robotically. We wouldn't be able to act with a sense of freedom. That's the main thing. We would lose our, what would be blinded is our sense of self, our sense of being separate. The mountain held over your head. Okay. And you simply can't, again, it's exactly what that, that Mashal wants to say, that Vayered Havaya Lao Sinai, it says it about that word. It means what? That Hashem revealed Himself without the sheath. And what happened? What, they didn't have free will? They had free will. They couldn't exercise it. It's like a person who's going out into broad daylight from a dark room. So he can't exercise his eyes. He still has eyesight. Nothing happened to his eyes. They're still there. But he just can't use it. So when Hashem reveals Himself in that way, which is exactly in our parsha, so it's, it's like you have no choice. 
but it's not true. You're still acting the same way. It's just, it's just your feeling. It says Hashem, this world is about you feeling that you want to serve me. That's what this is about, in spite of all the, all the difficulties and so on and so forth. For you to muster that change in yourself, that's what I built this world for. So don't take away the sheath, because I need you to feel that you're, that, that you're doing uh, something out of your own free will, out of your own choice, and so on. But when Hashem came, came down to Mount Sinai, there was no choice. He had to reveal, at least once, understand that this thing that you're doing, you still have free will. It's just that I don't want to show, it, show you all the time how, how um, predestined you are to do all of this. Because if I show you how predestined you are, you, you, you won't believe in yourself anymore. You won't exercise that thing that I gave you, which is I want you to do it out of free will. It, it, that free will will simply be blinded. So that's the sense, really, that the contraction, the tzimtzum, uh, a, occurred for in order to allow the sense of free will, the sense of yesh ein, to be experienced by the person. So, so therefore, elokim is what conceals havaya. So the whole point of the world is to be something that conceals Shem Avaya. So he didn't mention the name Avaya when he created the world. Because what did he do? That's why the Torah tells us that he created the world as a world with speech. He didn't create it with speech or with thought or with anything. He didn't create it. It's him. <laughs> but the revelation of it is through the name Elohim. Why through the name of King? Because that allows creation to be a sheath for, meaning the natural world to be a sheath for the godliness that's inside it. But if the godliness was, was revealed, there would be no free will. There would no, be no feeling that you, can, that you can do anything. So aren't you limiting Hashem then? You're saying Hashem could only create the world with this name and not with that name. No, with, that's our limit, it. our limit. When we say names, that's how we call Him. So if you call Hashem all day long by Havaya, if you would call him like that, that's why we don't say that name. The simple reason is because if you would use it all, I don't know, I don't know anybody who's done it, but if you, if you do it all day long so, so, and you understand what it means, apparently you'll, you'll become frozen in terms of your feeling of self, in terms of your feeling of, of, a, of being a free agent. It takes it away. That's why we don't say that name. We just say Adni. Adni, he's, he's, a, he's a king. So a king, you know a king. A king can kill you, but... but he can't make you do something. Or at least that's a feeling that most people have. It's all from, from, from our perspective. From Hashem's perspective, of course, all of this, everything that's happening here, from His perspective, is, is not happening separately from Him. It is Him. We also say it in terms of... It's an informational... It's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's an emotional or existential overload for people to hear that everything that they're doing... It's predetermined. They, they can't, people can't deal with it. It's very hard concept to grasp. Yeah. They can't deal with it. And if they really think about it, the, most people will, will, thankfully, people don't have a good attention span anymore. But if you're able to think about this for 10, 15 minutes, your whole perspective of reality changes. Thankfully, it goes right back to, <laughs> 10 minutes later, you're back to where you are without it. Okay, we have to end here. Is she